Hello and welcome to my course on research ethics and plagiarism. In week one, we are basically going to talk about the philosophical orientation of ethics, what are ethics, what are research ethics, why research ethics are important for us. So begin with, I thought that let us discuss about some basic ideas about the concept of ethics how it has originated and how we can ensure ethics while doing guiding or facilitating research work. If you see the etymological meaning, it is basically originated from a Greek word called ethos. The term ethics has originated from a Greek word ethos, which means character habit, customs, or way of behavior. How we behave as well as whether that behavior is acceptable or not, it is in tune with the norms of the society, of the community of which we are part. Is it moral or not? So sometimes ethics are also known as moral philosophy. As far as the origin of the word moral is concerned, the word moral comes from a Latin word called moras, which signifies customs, character, and again, the behavior. So what ethics are? If we see ethics as a philosophical discipline, then as a philosophical discipline, ethics is the study of values and guidelines by which we live. The values and guidelines which we follow as a citizen of a country, of the world, as a part of a community. There are certain ethics which are universal, there are certain ethics which are contextual. We will talk about those in details. As a moral philosophy, ethics is the philosophical thinking about morality, moral problems and moral judgments. So suppose as a researcher, whatever we do, whether we select a sample, whether we do the review of literature, whether we take some content, some design, some model from somewhere else, are we placing it with morality? Whatever we are doing, is it moral? If not, then what moral values, what moral issues are associated with it and how we can ensure the ethical behavior. When we think about all these things, we are basically thinking about ethics. Some people treat ethics as a science in which as much as it is a set of body of reasoned truth organized in a logical order, having its specific material and formal objects. It is a normative or regulative science in as much as it regulates and directs human life and gives the right orientation to one's existence. So it means that ethics are organized one. That's why ethics are science. Ethics are the organized or a logical order of some do's, doables, which are socially, morally, as well as accepted in your society and community. When I'm talking about community, I'm basically talking about a research community with a research perspective, an academic community with academics perspective. So please keep in these words in your mind. So when we talk about ethics, we should be very clear that ethics are not merely a set of codes which are written somewhere and we have to follow those, no. These are basically moral codes but you cannot compare or you cannot think that, okay, moral codes are the only ethics. Ethics are not something which restricts your behavior. Sometimes codes restrict you for doing something or not to do something. But ethics are different from those codes in a way that ethics help you to find what is good and how to do it, how to get it. 
ethical norms have obligatory characteristics which means that it has derived from a variety of purposes of ethical inquiry that is to discover the most ultimate principles of explanation or the most ultimate reasons why one ought to do anything why one ought to do anything this is the key whenever you think about any ethical aspect whenever you find yourself in any ethical dilemma you just ask a question to you what i ought to do so comprehensively we may define ethics as the systematic study of human actions from the point of view of their rightfulness or wrongfulness as means for the attainment of the ultimate happiness it is a reflective study of what is good or bad in that part of human conduct for which human has some personal responsibility so when we talk about ethics we basically talk about taking a decision that what is good or what is bad for us as a citizen as a part of a community or as a human being in simple words we can refer ethics at what is good and what is the way to get it what is bad and how to avoid it it refers to what ought to be done to achieve what is good and what ought not to be done to avoid what is evil if we apply all these ethical principles into the scientific research or in the research itself not only in the scientific but also in the social science research as also there are certain ethical principles associated with it some people have identified six such ethical principles the first is truth in research how true you are while conducting an experiment how true you are while selecting a sample or subjects how truly you have communicated to your subjects what you are going to do in the history there are many such cases about which you will read in the module also whether it is american syphilis experiment or it is nuremberg experiment or code or the nuremberg uh, genocide or there are many many such incidents are there where the searcher have never exposed the truth to the subjects whether the data which we are collecting are we reporting it properly or we are manipulating it so the truth is the core ethical principle of any research then the freedom a researcher should have or should be allowed to experiment freely if you clip or if you put the boundaries around a researcher a researcher may not be able to do what he or she wants to do so the freedom to do the work within the allowed limitations or within the approved structures is a core ethical principle a responsibility a researcher is completely responsible of what he or she is doing of what he or she is reporting of what he or she is experimenting so a researcher need to take the responsibility integrity is the key your professional integrity your personal integrity your integrity as a researcher is very essential this is also one of the core principles of scientific research collaboration in most of the researches we used to take help from different people they may be our lab assistants they may be our subjects they may be our co researchers they may be our uh, research associates so research is not only a job which can be done always by a single person or a single individual even if when you are reporting your research you are doing analysis of your research you may require help of many people because everyone is not expert in each and every area you can be a good experimenter you can be a good scientist maybe there is a possibility that you are not a good statistician so the experiment and data collection you can do but analysis you cannot do you may require a collaborator sometimes 
you can be a good planner you have a good idea but you are not a good tool maker so you may require someone helps to develop a tool you may require someone's help to collect the data so there are many people who are involved in scientific research to acknowledge their contribution truthfully and to involve them properly in your research is also one of the ethical principle sixth is the professionalism in whatever profession we are we may be scientist we may be engineer we may be social scientist we may be psychologist we may be educationist there are various domains in which we do research almost in every discipline research is going on research should be a true professional activity there is no personal bias there is no favoritism there is no choice there is no pressure of the funding agency you need not to manipulate the data just to please the agency or the body which is uh, funding your research so you should be a true professional this is also one of the core ethical principles of research there are many codes as i have told you about nuremberg code then dalmont report is there then uh, other documents are there but a very important recent one is the singapore statement on research integrity which was uh, developed as a part of second world conference on research integrity in july 2010 in singapore and it is being now acknowledged globally so for other you may read in your module you may visit the sites which have been given in the course but let us discuss in brief that what singapore statement on research integrity is saying its preamble says that the value and benefits of research are vitally dependent on the integrity of research while there can be and are national as well as disciplinary differences in the way research is organized and conducted there are also certain principles and professional responsibilities which are the fundamental to the integrity of researcher wherever it can be undertaken so this statement acknowledges the disciplinary differences the cultural differences the national differences in different types of research but it also a certain that there are certain key principles fundamental principles which are beyond the disciplinary boundaries and which should be followed by each and every one these are four honesty in all aspects of research accountability in the conduct of research professional courtesy and fairness in the working with others and good stewardship of research on behalf of others it also talked about 10 dimensions the first is integrity integrity means that the researcher should take responsibility for the trustworthiness of their research whatever research they are doing they have their trust in their work and they are taking the responsibility for that adherence to the regulations every researcher need to be aware about the regulations which are being guided in that particular research the policies the regulations if you are in academic research if you are in medical research if you are in psychological research many associations have come up with different codes so you also need to aware about those regulations and codes and you need to follow that then research methods your research methods should match the work which you are doing or which you are going to do you should employ appropriate research method whatever conclusions you are drawing after the critical analysis it should be based on the evidences whatever findings or interpretations you are reporting they should be complete and they should be reported objectively researcher should keep clear accurate records so the research recording is also one of the key activities you need to have a very clear and accurate recording of all the research work which you are doing the way in which you are doing so that it can be verified and it can be replicated by others if required at any part of time 
how are you sharing your data how are you reporting your research findings it is also very important so every researcher should share the data and findings openly promptly as soon as you have an opportunity to do so why because the world is so large at the same time many people may be doing the work in the same lines then who did first and who did best is a key authorship whatever contributions you are making to the publications to the funding applications to the reports you should take responsibility of that list of the authors should have only those names who meet the criteria of authorship of a particular work why it is important let me give you one example sometimes just to please someone or just to oblige someone we put their name as co-author in our research paper that can be our family member that can be our research supervisor and in indian research i must acknowledge this drawback that in many universities in india especially in the state universities and at the local level universities sometimes the supervisors force the researcher the student to publish a paper with their name sometimes as a first author also is it ethically correct if i have not contributed a single line to a research paper the whole work has been done by my student the whole a paper has been written by him only i am reading the paper or only i am suggesting some changes in the paper does this qualifies to be a co-author or the first author in a paper at least in my opinion it is very unethical when a research supervisor ask a student to publish a paper with him without any significant contribution from the supervisor you may agree you may disagree but this is my opinion and i believe in it publication acknowledgement yes it is very important if you have taken help from someone while doing your statistical analysis while reading your paper or you have been funded by someone or there is some sponsor of your researcher research you should not include those in the authorship criteria but you can acknowledge their contribution in your paper so better to acknowledge them rather than including their name as an author peer review is again a important aspect researchers should provide the prompt and rigorous evaluation and respect confidentiality whenever you are reviewing others work many times as a researcher when you submit a paper to any journal they ask you to suggest few names of the peer reviewers this doesn't mean that your paper will go to those but they will be in their database so you may get someone else paper your your paper may be reviewed by someone else generally in the peer review process the blind review system is being followed across the world if it is not so and you know that who has written the paper when the paper is coming to you for the reviewing purpose you need to maintain the confidentiality in that case also if any researcher has any conflict of interest whether it is financial professional it should be disclosed it should be disclosed even while submitting a research proposal or a paper for publication or for public communication sometimes be observed that many authors who are himself or herself are the editors of a particular journal in every issue first they write one or two paper then other papers are included people outside the system always question it they may not be saying to it because i am a editor of a journal so i will publish my paper in my own journal i don't know whether my paper has been uh, reviewed properly by the other reviewers or not it is very difficult to establish and it is very difficult to ascertain this for the other people so this bring a kind of conflict of interest issue with you so need to avoid this public communication researcher should limit the professional commitment to their recognized expertise when they are engaged in public discussion why 
because whatever we do as a researcher or whatever we are doing in a research process until or unless it is not published it should not be the part of any public or professional comment or any public or professional deliberation we may be lecturing about some issue we may be conducting a research on the same issue parallelly until or unless my research is not published or acknowledged i should avoid quoting the data from that research i should avoid quoting the interpretations from that research because that is still our interpretation which is not in public domain which has not been reviewed or established by the peers so we should avoid that we should avoid the personal views or opinions while we are delivering anything at the professional platform reporting irresponsible research practices whenever a researcher find that there is some unappropriate thing is going on there is some research misconduct is going on there is some fabrication falsification plagiarism we will talk all about these terms in different modules of this course later on we need to report it this is also our responsibility because if you will fail to report it in the future you may be asked for an explanation your research credentials will be questioned the benefits which you are claiming on the basis of such conflicting data or some misleading information you may be barred from that so avoid that whenever there are some in irresponsible or inappropriate research practices are coming to your mind avoid those respond those strongly let me give you one example asking the money for publication of paper has two dimensions there are certain journals there are certain journals which ask you to pay the publication fee after getting your paper reviewed and accepted generally such some open access journal do this practice because they don't charge from the people when other people are downloading a published paper but some people ask you to first submit the paper and before submitting the paper you should uh, enroll yourself into a particular seminar or you should submit a research papers uh, advance all those things so sometimes you should avoid all these things because you notice that these are irresponsible research practices we should discourage it if we need to maintain a research integrity the research environment in the institution or the university should be very convenient the environment should be that it should promote a learner to create something new to encourage integrity through education through clear policies through standards to be followed while doing the research one more very important dimension is societal consideration every researcher and every research institution should consider that they have an ethical obligation towards the society whatever we are doing if it is not for the benefit of the society if it is not accepted in the society if it is not matching with the societal considerations it will be under question and you may fall in trouble there is a very famous paper of samu and andresnik d the paper was published in 2015 and that they have identified certain ethical principles for the research which we all should follow let me discuss each one of these one by one which have been suggested by samo and rashnik honesty honesty in all scientific communications whether it is reporting data whether it is reporting result whether it is using any method or procedure whether it is adopting any model or even the publication status never fabricate never falsify never misrepresent the data don't deceive the colleagues research sponsors or to the public if we follow this we will maintain the honesty in our research objectivity avoid biasness if your experimental design is having certain biasness if the data analysis is biased if the data interpretation is biased if the peer review system is biased or your personal decision or personal choices are uh, affecting your research findings 
or the writings, there will be less objectivity in your research. As a researcher, as a professional researcher, we should avoid or minimize bias or self-deception. If there is any personal or financial interest which is involved in the research, which is affecting the research, better to disclose it. Whatever promises and agreements you are doing with any funding agency, you need to follow that. You maintain the consistency in your thoughts and actions and establish the integrity of yourself as a researcher. Carefulness. While doing the research, whether it is scientific or social scientific research, while reporting about the research, you should be very careful. You should avoid the careless of errors and negligence. You examine your own work very critically, also the work of your peers. Good is that if you are having the records of your research activities, so that in future you may prove it if something gone wrong or against you. How much openness is required? With whom we can share the data? With whom we can share the results? With whom we can share the idea, tools or resources? Better to share it as much as possible after publication. Because if we are publishing or we are doing some research, it is not for us. It is for society. It is for our research community. It is for our discipline. So if they are not aware about it, if they, you are not going to share all these things with your community, you will be in a big block or you can say, you know, covered box. No one know you. No one know your work. That is not the purpose of research. What will happen? Someone will criticize you. No issue. You will learn from that. So be open from, for criticism. Be open for new ideas. Bring transparency in your methods, material, assumptions, analysis, and whatever information is needed about your research or to evaluate your research. Even sometimes people avoid while writing their research paper some important things. That what method they have used, how they have collected the data, what was the sampling or how the sample was set, which mechanism was followed, how the tool was validated. So if you bring all these things in your research paper or in your publication or in your report, it will bring the transparency in your research. Take the responsibility, whatever work you are doing in a research, whether it is a collaborative research, you may be doing a certain part, or it is your own research, you may be doing the complete work. Take the responsibility of that. You should be intellectually very honest. You should follow the norms of intellectual property. You honor the patents, always give credit to the copyrighted content, or even the content which you are taking from any uh, licensed, open licensed portal or place. Never use unpublished data, method or result without permission. Give proper acknowledgement and credit and citation to all the contributors. Never plagiarize. Confidentiality is a key. Protect confidential communications such as papers, grants submitted for publication, personal records, spreads, Sometimes some secrets you get from the government, from the military or from the patient records in case of uh, medical researches. Never disclose the identity of any of your subject to anyone in any case. When you are publishing something, what is your key? Is your idea just to progress in your own career and keep on, keep on publishing the work which even you do not know what is it? You may find, find people who have published 100, 200 research papers. But if you will ask them, even they will not be able to tell the areas in which they have published. So why to publish much? Publish quality, publish required and publish less. Responsible publication is very important. Avoid wasteful and duplicate publications. If you are a research supervisor, if you are a mentor, if you are an educator or teacher, always help the research students always advise them properly, promote their welfare and allow them to make their own decisions. Generally in collaborative research or projects, everything is not being done by you, yourself. There are many colleagues, many staff members, many learners, many research associates, all are involved with you. You need to respect their contribution. You need to respect them fairly. It is very important. Social responsibility is also a key. 
whatever is good in terms of society what is social good promote it prevent the things or mitigate the things which are harmful for the society that is very important thing you should not discriminate against the colleagues or the students or the subjects on the basis of sex race ethnicity or other factors if they are not related to your research if they are a variable in your research you will treat it differently but until or unless they are not a variable in your research you need not to do any discrimination develop your professional competencies and expertise because research in is an area where lifelong learning works a researcher can never claim that whatever i have learned i have learned enough and i need not to learn anything else whether it is science or social science competency is something which keep on increasing day by day so follow it you should also be aware about the legal obligations or the legality involved with your research with your institution the law the codes the government policies everything if your research involve any animal please show proper respect and care for that if you are using them in your research do not conduct unnecessary or poorly designed animal experiments if at all they are needed that to after taking the permission of your research ethics review board which is now generally compulsory in every research institution if your research involves the human subjects protect their life protect their dignity protect their personal things and privacy whenever you are doing any research on human subjects you need to oh, minimize the harms and risk involved and maximize the benefit if you are doing something with very vulnerable populations you need to take a lot of special precautions so i think with this you can start your thinking that why research is important and how you can conduct an ethical research we will meet again in some other modules thank you very much Thank you.